and I don't think I told you this story about my Pantherina experience. I don't want to be redundant here, but I had a heroic experience on the Amnita Pantherina. And uh, that one was very... Uh, I had repetitive motion syndrome. And I was living up in the mountains. I had freeze-dried Amnita Pantherina. I knew it didn't have muscarin. I'd eaten muscaria. I foamed a lot. It wasn't that much fun. So I knew Pantherina was four to five times more potent. So I took the freeze-dried specimens from the herbarium, from the the college I was working at. I was living in, underneath a volcano up in Darrington, Washington, and I was with my friend Dave, and he had his smaller body weight, so we made an omelet, and let's try pantherina. And he trusted me, um, note to self, <laughs> note to others. And so we ate the pantherina um, in an omelet, and I cut the omelet bigger for me because I'm bigger body weight than him, and we ate the mushrooms like at 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, in an omelet. They were delicious. And uh, just across the river was a Squire Creek, Creek campground. And it's where the tourists come up and their Winnebago's and, you know, campers and their families and stuff. And we're long-haired hippies. And um, I said, you know, just on the other side there, there's a hill that we can get up on the hillside. It's an incredible view of the valley, the snow-capped volcano, just a great vista. Let's go there. So we, for some reason, it's so close, but we drove my car like, you know, a thousand feet to this campground, went over the bridge, over this little river, and we parked, you know, you know, just on the outside of the campground, right where all the campers are. And so we walked past, you know, all these tourists and their families, and we went up on the hill, and then we're sitting up on the hill and uh, we're waiting for the mushrooms to come on in like an hour, nothing, no experience, like, you know, what's going on? And this is very typical, by the way. This is characteristic. Amnita muscaria and pantherina take a long time before the onset of first symptoms. And then uh, we're up on the hill, and I'm looking out on the horizon, beautiful view, and suddenly, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> this, like, this sort of this this wave came through our visual field, like this invisible wave. And I said, did, did you feel that? And he goes, yeah, I felt that too. And like, whoa, we're feeling the same thing. And then, <laughs> and so our visual fields started getting distorted and they start coming on so fast. We're going, holy shit, we got to get out of here. You know, <laughs> well, this is coming on too fast. Let's go back home and be good because it's more intense. So we walk back through and I have a Rolly Flex camera, I've got a 35 millimeter, been a photographer all my life. And, uh, and they were walking through the backside of the campground, and there's all these kids and families and Winnebago's and camper vans. And and then I remember this one Winnebago. It was like the longest Winnebago in the universe. Every time I was walking, it was a Winnebago of no end. I couldn't get past this one Winnebago. I kept on walking, my friend, and then finally, we got past this Winnebago. It seemed like it took forever. And there's my car. And for some friggin' reason, I locked the door. <gasps> and I have my keys. And I looked at the key hole, the door. And I looked at my keys. And I went, missed that one. <laughs> Did it again. Missed that one. Just a, me and my friend goes, everything okay, Paul? That goes, Everything's fine. Just give me some time. And then, you know, after I don't know how many times, magically, just by the fact that I tried so many times, I think it just slipped into the lock and uh, unlocked the door. And so, okay, so I sit in the car, and now I have to put it in the ignition. And I'm going, boom, oh, no, boom. And my friend goes, maybe you shouldn't drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good advice. Maybe I shouldn't drive. So uh, it is no way I couldn't. It was getting more and more intense. It was not responsible to drive, you know. So absolutely the right decision not to drive. So then I got out of the car and the camera was on my lap, and then I get out of my car, and you know. Meanwhile, a group of people started gathering because we were there for a long time trying to get into the car and then trying to, and so these people got kind of curious, and Dave goes, you know, some people over there are kind of gathering Paul, looking at us, and I didn't want to look at them, and so I, I get out of the car, and my camera falls, and it hits the ground. I go, oh, shit. 
I'm like, I just dropped my Rolleiflex camera. And then I picked up the camera and I'm going, wow, I just dropped my Rolleiflex camera. <laughs> I drop it again. Oh, no. And I pick it up. I go, did I just drop my Rolleiflex camera? <laughs> dropped it again. Repetitive motion syndrome. I picked up that camera and dropped it dozens and dozens of times. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, the... the cluster of people got larger parents were hud- uh, were holding their children close to them saying we don't know what's going on here but it's getting weird over there so pretty soon i had a very large group of these campers that were all watching us but oh they, they keep in their distance and i had this repetitive motion syndrome of dropping and dropping and dropping and so finally you know we had the staccato pace the timeline of the day got broken up so i had morning when we ate then i had evening then i had early afternoon and then I had early morning, then I had late afternoon, then I had evening. The whole thread of time was disintegrated, like, and scrambled. And so then we walked. And, uh, and, and I lost Dave, you know. Dave, I figured, Dave, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> I got enough to work here, <laughs> deal with here. And so we walked over, and we walked over this bridge, and we got to my place. And I got to my house, and I had a combination lock on the door. I went, oh, oh, my God. The last thing I need is another. So I spun that combination lock, and I couldn't get it open. And, and then I went into convulsions, and they felt good. So I'm convulsing on the ground, and spiking like this. And every time I convulsed, right afterwards, it actually felt good. And so, like, you know, I'm convulsing, but it seems to be helping me. So I convulsed and, you know, thrashing on the ground. Don't know where it happened to Dave. And so I go back to the lock and I spun it and it's magically the lock opened up and then I fell into bed. And then I had this amazing rush of Einsteinian, Einsteinian thoughts. The thoughts were just so profound. I go, oh my gosh, if I could write these down, these are just like so important, you know, conclusions of great mysteries of the universe. I have this at my hand. And just before I came to the object of the sentence, I would have a prepositional uh, or adverbial phrase. And then I get a tangent. Oh no. And I saw death then as being perpetual tangents that never gave you the satisfaction of having a completed thought. So I went down this rabbit hole of constantly forks in my thinking. And then I blacked out, and, um, and then at the end of the day, um, you know, the sunlight came through. The 12-hour experience this is a long experience. And so it was in the summertime, and then at you know, the very end of the, the day, the sunlight came through and flickered on my eyelids, and, and, and I woke up. Look at this. Whoa. Boom. Look how they're sliding all over the place. I mean, that is fucking ice. Yeah. That guy can't stop his car. Look. Look, he's just going to slide in that car behind him. This is oh ridiculous. Is that you can't stop it. Oh, shit. Boom. And, and that car's going. sliding. They're all sliding. The whole thing is ice. That is fucking terrifying. 